So do you want to know the number one study tool that I use to earn a math degree as well as help thousands of students with their math? It's really simple. It's just one sheet of paper. Now, where does this one sheet of paper come from? Let me tell you about my sophomore year at Western Michigan University when I was starting calculus. Yeah, I might have been a little bit of a late bloomer for a math major, but come on guys, I eventually graduated. But yeah, I was a little concerned, right? I didn't have much time to waste and I didn't have time to struggle in a math class anymore. I needed to get my math credits done, but I really wanted to mention it real quick for all of you that are so concerned that you are behind. It's okay if you don't take calculus in high school. I took it as a sophomore in college and I'm okay. Okay, I survived. And I know you can too. I was a little scared of calculus. I didn't know what to expect. So one of the first couple of lectures, I remember I went to my professor and I said, hey, what do I need to do to be successful in your class? I was a pretty good student, wasn't I? I you know pretty happy for myself. But a little side note for any of you, I've always wondered if maybe you should ask that question to your teacher. I highly recommend it. I loved when students would come up to me and ask me for any tips or how they could be successful. I always try to give them as much value as possible. It's an absolute great question. Please do it. So the professor with little hesitation said, I want you to go through all the theorems, all the definitions that we cover in this class, and I want you to summarize them and rewrite them on a sheet of paper. Then that's going to be your kind of study tool that I want you to use as you prepare for our upcoming tests through the year. Now, I wasn't really sold on this, this idea. That kind of sounded like a lot of work and it wasn't really a requirement for the course. So I already had a lot on my plate. I was taking multiple other courses. I already had a lot of homework and we had study guides for our tests. Like this is kind of seems a lot, but guess what? I did it and I did it for test one and I did it for test two. And guess what? I started to see results. I remember taking my test and being like, I remember writing this stuff down. Being able to retain the information became easier for me as I was taking my tests. And then one day it dawned on me, that little stinker, he basically just conned me into studying more. And that's basically what I did. I mean, I would spend hours creating these old cheat sheets. I was rewriting all these definitions, all the formulas, all these graphs, everything that we were learning. I was taking things from my notes, taking things from the book, and I was summarizing it all on these sheets of paper. And I had no thing to show for it. I had nobody to show it to. Nobody understood what I was doing. It was just me. But all of this time that I was doing this was really actually me just studying for my upcoming test. And it worked so well that I just kind of adopted that strategy. I said, from now on, for all of my math courses, this is what I'm going to do. But eventually I graduated and I give a lot of credit to this study tool, really helping me as a struggling math student, being able to wrap my head around a lot of concepts. Because one of the things that I always struggled with was math never just felt like it came easy to me. I always had to like think through things over and over again. A lot of times it felt like after the test is when things would finally sink in. I'd be like, oh, now I understand it. So by creating this cheat sheet, what I was doing is I was doing more studying in preparation for the test and quiz. I was giving my brain more time to make those connections, to the review the material. And it just helped me retain the information better for each and every test. Now, I never forgot about this cheat sheet, but once I became a high school math teacher, I did kind of put it to the side because, you know, when you're first starting teaching, you kind of have a lot going on. But it wasn't until I started to realize my students didn't know how to study for a test. Just like I didn't know how to study for a test when I was in high school. They would literally actually ask me, how do I study? They thought studying was just doing your homework, doing the study guides, right? Maybe reviewing your notes the night before the test. Anytime students didn't get a grade they wanted, all I heard was, well, I'm just not a good test taker. I'm just not really good at math. And I got fed up. I'm like, no guys, this is not it. You just don't know how to study for math. Let me show you. And so this is what I told them. Kids, this is what you're gonna do. Take out a blank sheet of paper, 11 and a half by eight inches, no poster board. I want you to write down all the definitions, all of the formulas, all of the theorems that we're learning for each and every this class and write it down on that sheet of paper. Now, I actually went a little bit above what the professor told me. And I said, you know what? I also want you to include any examples that you worked on through class. Maybe it was a problem that you got wrong on a quiz. Maybe it was a problem you got wrong on a test. Maybe it's a problem you didn't understand on the homework or maybe a problem that maybe took too many steps. You couldn't do it on your own or you got it wrong or there was always a step that you forgot. Basically, if you want me to kind of summarize what I want you to write on this sheet of paper in a nutshell, what if I was going to allow you to use this sheet of paper on your test? What information would you write on that sheet of paper. Whatever information you're thinking of, I want you to start writing that information on that sheet of paper. Now, if you do this correctly, you should have this sheet of paper filled up front and back, and it should take you about a good solid hour of completing this. Now, obviously, some students were kind of hesitant like me when I first learned this information. They said, yeah, I'm not going to do that. Or maybe they just do the bare minimum, fill up maybe like a quarter of it and just, you know, kind of do something to check it off the list. And then there's other students who are like, if Miss McLogan's telling me to do this, I'm going to do it. And they would do an amazing 
amazing job creating their cheat sheets. And guess what, guys? It worked. I would track the data on students that created a cheat sheet compared to students that did not create a cheat sheet. And the data could not be more clear. Students that created cheat sheets did better than students that did not create cheat sheets. Now, obviously, the cheat sheet is not everything. It's not going to save your grade. If you don't know what you're doing, you don't know what you're doing. And also, there's many other ways to go to for studying a math test, like I explained in this video here, than just creating a cheat sheet. However, the cheat sheet is so helpful because it's something that you can build on throughout the year. And what I mean by that is you can create a cheat sheet for chapter one, create a cheat sheet for chapter two, you know, chapter three, chapter four, on and on and on. Then once you get to the semester or the end of the year, what you can do if you want to review all of this material, right? You think at the end of the year, there's so much material that you have to go back and review. If you're going to look through all of your notes, all of your homework assignments, all of your tests, all of your quiz, that's daunting. That's a lot of content and a lot of information. But if you maybe have like eight or 10 cheat sheets that you can just quickly review, maybe do one cheat sheet every night and you're just reviewing the information, that's not that bad. And then what I always recommend my students doing was to always create an extra cheat sheet for the semester exam or for the end of the year. Because if you think about it, if you take, you know, let's say four or six cheat sheets, compress them down to one cheat sheet, that's going to take a while. But it's also, again, going to tell your brain like, oh, some concepts you go over and over and over throughout the end of the year. So by the end of the year, you really know that concept well. You don't need to include it on the cheat sheet. But then there's other concepts that you completely forgot about or still never connected. Well, that's good information that you're going to want to make sure you write down again on that cheat sheet. And again, guys, it's really about the process. It's not actually about what's on the cheat sheet. It's about going through the process, going through all of the material, going through all of your notes, going through your book, going through your test, going through your quizzes, reviewing all of this information, which is really the benefit. And yeah, it's part of studying for a math test. And it's something that we don't really talk a lot about. And students are just really quick to give up excuses on why they struggle remembering formulas or why they struggle remembering steps in a problem. It takes practice, guys. So give your brain what it needs. And for some of you, that's going to mean more time studying. And this is a great way with purpose that you can study for each and every one of your tests. So guys, this worked for me overcoming being a struggling math student. It's helped many of my students over the years, and I know it can help you too. So if you absolutely love this video, feel free to give me a like. Go ahead and watch more of my tips in the description down below or the next video I have for you here. Cheers.